Welcome back. As is the custom every year, Namibia is receiving flash floods in the northern part of the country. The Directorate of Education, Arts and Culture in the Oanguena region suspended teaching at two schools as the flood water is reportedly rising in that area. A total of six schools have been affected by the floods. The chairperson of the Regional Disaster Risk Management Committee in the Ohanguena region, Erickson Dawanifwa, now joins us telephonically with an update. Good morning, sir, and welcome to Good Morning Namibia. Yes, good morning, sir, and good morning, Namibia, and to all the it has been officially confirmed and documented that there's flooding in the Ongwena region. In short, how far has the flooding gone and how many villages have been affected thus far? Correct. Flood water has arrived in the media in the Ongwena region on the 13th of January, it was first Friday uh, this year, on the northern part of the region affected Angela and Angela uh, constituency. The flood water passes through the villages on the borders, like uh, Engela, Shoke, Imbadalunga, or Faisimbo. And it is affected the Uvongo, Engela, Engela, Matunda, and the villages. Uh, those are part of the villages in the, in the region that have been affected by water. Plus so other villages that we have not even here. Um, another way the flood uh, water has also arrived yesterday, uh, from Angola, passes in the eastern direction of Elana City Town, that is recently known as Tango Town, through Onaminda, Okatole, and Oskango Village, facing that side of Pondope in Wangwena City. So, uh, the Furong School, which is uh, rightly said, uh, has been affected by water, but this has been severely affected by water, it's like Nala Combined School and Shingunguma Primary School. Uh, those are the schools that have been severely uh, affected by uh, uh, the flood water and uh, the mitigation measures have been taken uh, to temporarily sustain uh, flood. Um, the other schools, like in the Lokero Combined School and the Nopi com uh, Combined School, partially affected, but the normal teaching and learning situation is going on. Um, but um, the water wave system is not so much, and the uh, depth or the amplitude is manageable by elders. They got plenty of sunlight and stones and pens of um, uh, at, at different places. However, uh, this water is dangerous to the minor ones, especially the kids and the, the young children. So therefore, uh, we are saying we are heavily affected by this water, even though closing here and there is possible. But at some institutions like schools uh, and accessing clinics and hospitals is not easy for the minor ones and unable people to, to close those osanas. Thank you for the comprehensive update, sir. Talk to us about what your region has done thus far in particular, but also government in general to arrest the situation. Uh, so far, um, the... We, we are having the, the, the constituent disaster risk management committees in place and the regional disaster risk management committee in place. So, so far, the constituent disaster risk management committee for Engela plus Ongenga constituencies and the regional disaster risk management committee uh, did meet on the 15th of January and the 18th of January 2023, respectively, to put up the precautional measures as well as coming up with the interventional or interventions uh, towards floods. Uh, many of the regional disaster risk management committee members have been on the ground to assess the water situation since day one until today. I refer to the members as like um, the institutional member or sector members uh, comprises as follows, the, di the, the Directorate of Education represented by the director himself, the NDF, Namibian Defense Force, the Namibian Police, uh, Directorate of Health, on Gwena Regional Council itself has also dispatched its officials, the Governor's Office, Minister of Agriculture, Water, Land and Reform, uh, referring also to the uh, Division of uh, Veterinary Services, Rural Water Supplies, the Hydrologists, uh, the office of Mr. Hango, the Red Clothes, plus any other stakeholders, being government stakeholders or NGOs, they have been on the ground to assess the situation. Just, just to mention but a few, um, as to 
what are maybe uh, those interventions that we have taken so far. Um, the committees, being both of them, uh, the constituent the disaster risk management committee or the regional uh, disaster risk management committee, uh, have recommended for uh, some schools uh, like the one that I have just mentioned, uh, the Shingunguma Primary School and Ongala Combined School, to close temporarily until the situation has stabilized. So uh, there is also have been uh, standards identified uh, for the possibility to relocate uh, people who are not able to to be in their in their houses if the situation of the water will be uh, very much uh, tense. Uh, those centers that have been identified are in these villages, like in Ohongo, we have got one center. In Ohaingo, there has been also one center identified. There's also one center called Ongoshi. Uh, in case the, there will be some um, uh, community members or families that would want to be relocated to the uh, higher grounds. So another point that we have also come up with, or the committee has just also come up with, is that committees have also identified some basic needs that will be needed uh, by, the, by the people who will be relocated in those centers. And those uh, uh, needs are like the tents, the water tanks to keep the water, the mobile toilet for uh, sanitation purposes, the food, mosquito nets, the health outreach services. We, uh, those uh, colleagues from the Minister of Health and Services has pledged also to extend their outreach services to the centers if possibly. Uh, there, also, there will be also some needs of the beds and mattresses and also the water makers because we know this time around uh, the accessibility to the water meters and the water tap uh, point is very difficult. Therefore, we have also uh, 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 put aside all those mechanisms or mitigating measures at least to, to make sure that we give the services possibly to, to the people who are going to be, to be relocated or the people who are going to be locked up in their in their houses. So the Directorate of Education will also continue to monitor and assessing the water situation around the schools and give the necessary assistance or refer the possible assistance that the school, the particular school, will will need. Let's so talk about that more in more detail, them. sir. It's good news that teaching and learning generally seems possible at this stage, but you've confirmed that it has been suspended at two schools. Talk to us about what's being done in the meantime and when teaching and learning is expected to resume at these schools. Uh, so far, we, as I, like I've said, we have suspended uh, classes at uh, Singunguma Primary School and uh, Ongala Combined School. Um, uh, the, the, the children have to, to, to be at home, uh, their houses with their parents, and uh, the parents have to look after those children. But of course, teachers are also trying also to monitor their schools in terms of the safety and also to put up some, um, they, they, uh, prepare their activities for the next resumption, resumption of the school. But as of we are speaking, uh, there is no teaching and learning going to these two schools. Apart from those schools that I did not mention here, the normal teaching and learning is going on. But do we know when teaching and learning will resume at those two schools? The teaching and learning uh, commencement will be determined by the situation of the water. So far, we have suspended this uh, teaching and learning until further notice. As, uh, like I've said, we will be keeping monitoring the situation. In case that the situation will be normalizing, then we will we'll be resuming the classes. So... And if we also realize that there will be no any possible, we will just try, as I've said, that we are assessing the situation. We will just try to see some possible or alternatives that we will come up with, at least to make sure that the teaching and learning will not be disrupted late. What are the experts saying when is the situation expected to normalize or will it get worse before it gets better? Yes, the, the Minister of Agriculture, Water, Forestry, uh, Water and Land Reform has passed the hydrologists. They are on the ground. They even assessed the situation of the water from Namibia until um, up to uh, within Angola, on the southern parts of Angola. And their, their, their statement or report says, so 
Angola has received uh, a good rainfall on the certain parts of Angola, and that has been prompted the water to flow uh, from Angola to the to Namibia, especially on the northern part of Namibia. And the, 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 the water is likely to come still from that side of Angola. Therefore, we don't need to keep it reluctant. Uh, we have to prepare ourselves to make sure whatever situation will be, or we, it will be under control. And we make sure that the safety of our people, the safety of our children at the institution, the safety of our people at the hospital and clinic will be at good hands. For those Namibians with a humanitarian heart, whether from the public or the private sector, would like to render assistance, how can they go about doing that, sir? Yes, like I have indicated that um, the Regional Disaster Risk Management Committee has been comprises, so comprises of different sectors. Uh, like I have mentioned to them that um, uh, Education, NDF, NAMPOL, we are together, HEALTH, we are together. And the Directorate of Health has pledged to give a, a, a psycho support, a social psycho support, and they also pledged to give the, their outreach services and uh, distribute ORS, water makers, and mosquito nets uh, to the affected communities. Um, the other um, stakeholders have also pledged, like the NDF, uh, NDF has also pledged to do the following uh, 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 services like to supply the speedboats, the hovers, and, and their skippers in case that the situation will get to west. Uh, they also assist to do a domestic operation as their secondary uh, role uh, uh, as a ministry. And they also, also help to, to relocate people to the high ground if the situation will demand. Um, the regional councils also, uh, being a, a, a regional government, uh, they will also try to give it a helping hand uh, to supply the tent, to supply or to avail the vehicles, the 4 by 4 vehicles that can cross the water, and also to give or to give uh, um, the officials to be on the ground every time to assess the situation. Uh, we are also having NAMPOL in board that will provide also hovers and skippers as well, uh, at, at least uh, uh, to, to make sure that uh, they, they, they make people that may also want to cross the water to for services uh, and, 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 and also to, to safeguard the situation on the ground. So other uh, stakeholders um, are also in board, like I've said, like those of the Honorable Governor, um, has also pledged to provide uh, the 4 by 4 vehicles also to assist in the situation. Uh, but of course, because we have to make sure that we have got all equipment and materials, items in place, so we have reserved uh, um, a warehouse at the Launa Fiji town, uh, which has been donated by, by NIDA leadership, um, and is where we are going to keep, to keep all the materials. We are also having the NCCI in board, whereby some of the, of, of, of the business people have also uh, pledged to give some helping hand uh, in terms of the uh, speedboats and plus other items. But of course, uh, this is also appreciate, uh, 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 an appreciative uh, um, uh, support uh, given by some uh, 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 business people uh, at least to make sure that we have normalized the situation. And finally on this one is to what do, uh, what are the interventions? Um, we have recommended, as a committee, we have recommended um, um, that the Ministry uh, of Agriculture, Water and Land Reform must be always on board uh, uh, being using the hydrologists to update us as how, what is the level of the water, what's the frequency of the water, and um, uh, and also the speed, the velocity of, of the water, whether it's manageable or not, at least to, to, to allow us to allow us to make a corrective decision uh, towards the the, the, the the flood situation. A number of stakeholders have indeed thus come to your aid thus far. Now, apart from those existing pledges, if anyone else wants to contribute, whether in monetary form or in kind, how do they go about it? Do they get in touch with the committee? Yes. Um, the Good Samaritans have been already indicated they want to give their helping hand. Uh, and of course, maybe I might also appreciate the also of the Prime Minister that have already started uh, demanding or requesting us to submit the needed items in this situation. 
that we did already, and the ministry of uh, the office of the prime minister has already uh, pledged that, uh, based on the items that we have submitted to them, they will provide them uh, as uh, our request. And we are also having some uh, business people, like I have indicated, those have been calling, those of the governor have been calling my office as to what at least assistance do we want to, to get from them. So we are having a number of them that want to give their helping hands at least to normalize the situation. How do you see to it that members of the public are kept abreast of developments, seeing that it is an unfolding situation? How do you see to it that they are informed about the situation at all times? As a committee, in our meeting of yesterday, we have agreed uh, to have a, a, an information center in the Ministry of Information, Communication and Technology, whereby we'll keep updating uh, the public member every day according to the situation as it arises. So this is one of the mitigating measures that we, we have to keep the public members informed any time, any day, at any situation as it, as it arises. So these are some of the possible ways. And then we're also, having, we're also using some platforms like the NBC Cut FM. We have got Eagle FM. We have got CP FM, plus other uh, platforms like the platform that we have uh, uh, used to, to get me at least to update the public. Uh, those are the, uh, um, uh, some of the possibilities or alternatives that we can use to inform the public. We have received the sad report that one 10-year-old girl unfortunately passed away as a result of these floods. Are there reports of any casualties and or fatalities? Um, yeah, we have also had that allegation, but according to our office, we did not get an official information that we have got one, one child that has perished due to the flood. Uh, we, I am saying we don't have that information. And we were not reported to that uh, about that information that one of the staff has lost her life or his life because of the flood. I'm saying we did not get that report whether there is anyone. And I'm saying, and I have to inform the public, that that information which is circulating, uh, it was not happened in, 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 in this region as a result of this flood that we have at hand. Now, sir, these floods are an annual occurrence. Is it a fair observation that our response seems to be reactive as opposed to it being proactive? Excuse me, because I may not even hear you clearly because my background is not good and the rain is raining here. May you repeat yourself? Problem. Is it a fair observation that although these floods are an annual occurrence, our response always seems to be reactive as opposed to proactive? Um, the flood situation comes after some years, uh, like the past three, four years, we did not experience floods, or maybe it could be five, six, we did not experience floods. So it comes at, 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 at maybe after some years. Uh, that's why we cannot say uh, this is an annual thing. But there are some areas that have been affected by water, and it's not flood water. And this is the water, uh, it's the rainfall. Um, yeah, uh, I cannot say it's an annual situation, but I can say maybe the, the, the weather itself, uh, is the one that has been decorating this situation, uh, that can result in the flood. So, and, and I'm very sorry that I cannot pick up your question because my background is not so good. Very well, sir. What is it that can be done now already in the events that these floods hit the northern part of the country again next year? Uh, I've indicated the intervention, but um, in terms of uh, the government, uh, we are... Uh, um, are requesting that at least as government we must make sure that we have put up uh, the road infrastructure connecting the public institutions connecting the villages that are in the flood water brown zones to make sure that they are connected and in terms uh, in case the flood comes or the heavy rain comes then these people will not be affected so this is 
something that we need to look at as government. It's something that we need to look at as non-government organizations. We must also make sure that we provide services close to the people so that when blood comes or when air brain comes, then these people will not be severely affected by the situation. Sir, so any final thoughts in terms of a message to residents of the Oanguena region before we let you go? Yes, um, I'm urging the public members or I'm requesting the public members to report any unusual situation about floods to their regional councillors, to their headmen, headwomen, or to any other potential leaders who is uh, reachable by them so that we make sure that there will be no any uh, uh, community, mem community members affected to be left unattended to. We also request the community members that at least an unable person may be assisted. Uh, at least uh, the unable person, I, I, I refer to the, uh, to the patients, the old age people, the kids, uh, those who want to access the services. They may not be allowed to, to cross over the Osanas and and deep ponds and sands uh, just to avoid losing lives. Uh, parents escort their, 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 their kids to school uh, uh, not to allow kids to cross over the sands by themselves because this question of water is unpredictable. It might be that this is your usual road that you use to cross over, but the depth of the water change any time, the velocity of the water change any day, any time, and the depth of the water, and also uh, it has been it's changing any time. Therefore, we, we must not assume that this is our usual road that we used to close. We want to urge the parents to make sure that they assess the situation any day, any time, and make sure that their children are very safe. We are also requesting and urge the family members that they must start making up their minds to be relocated to the higher ground while time. Uh, other than waiting until the situation will go to waste. Will go to waste. So, therefore, finally, I want to urge all the community members in the region, in the affected villages, not to be panicked. This is a normal situation. We don't need to panic, and this water comes to stay with us, and we must also learn how to stay uh, with a peaceful mind with this water and to make sure that we are managing this water as it comes to us. Not really Thank you. like the way we see it, that uh, it comes to us, to destroy us. We must not panic. Uh, for those who have been uh, psychologically affected, we are having the personnel from the Minister of Health that are on the ground to give a psycho support to, to all those affected people to make sure that we are all in good and all the psychologically. Thank you. So thank you for your time. Please stay safe. Good luck to you and your team. Thank you very much for having me and thank you very much to all listeners in the media. That was the chairperson of the Regional Risk Disaster Management Committee in the Ohangwena region, Mr. Erickson Dawanifa, talking to us about the situation on the ground as far as the floods are concerned. Your 7 o'clock news coming up after a brief break.